Go ahead, Jordi. Yes. This is very, very short. Uh, this proposal basically solves an issue that uh, is uh, in, in the policy improvement. It's not something that I suggested. It's been waiting for a long time. I didn't want to solve it just in case somebody dared, but ap apparently it was for me. And that is to the, the ISP. I didn't touch the ISP because of, I, I consider that it's right, but if uh, you consider it necessary, if I'm not censored, uh, I will uh, work at that too. And in in addition, I wanted to say something about uh, the end users that may have multiple sites and therefore to require different prefixes for each site. This is especially remarkable in the case uh, of uh, IPv6. There's been a discussion this afternoon uh, about this, uh, so I won't discuss it again because it's already been uh, discussed, but uh, I invite you to read that discussion if you don't remember remember it. And we also eliminate the section for distributions of IPv6 of layers to ISPs, first of all, because it's um, the inconsistent the way it's drafted, because we are defining a policy in that paragraph, so it doesn't make sense. And second, because it's not uh, uh, recommendable today, especially in the case of IPv6 with IPv4, it is true that it occurred because of NAT. Now, there's an additional issue, and it is that in that same section, they say something about uh, the register, but it's duplicated. In session four, five, six, uh, register of assignments. Now, the issue of um, the assignment of end user and um, uh, end site is uh, mixed, and probably everything depends on concepts of IPv4. I won't mention the example. There you have it, in case you want to read it, and we already discussed it. So let me go directly to the text of the proposal. Um, to your left, you have what the current text says in the policy manual, and to the right, the changes that I implemented and I highlighted, especially what has really changed. Because here, I haven't deleted anything. I clarified the title. I said that this part only corresponds to the end site. And what I have added is an end site an end site is a location here. This should be in blue too. An end site is one location of an end user. And I have added the term location in all the paragraphs. Why? Because indeed, that's the way it is. We may have an organization or an individual that has several businesses and uh, for each company or different um, uh, offices uh, may need a different prefix. So, in addition, this doesn't exist, so that is why the right column is white. We added a simple definition of end user, so, uh, that is um, a client of a, a layer, and this doesn't is not uh, inconsistent with uh, the end user, the direct client of Lucknick, that is what Sergio is interpreting. That is, the fact that we are giving this definition is not uh, um, is not uh, um, repealing the other policy, but it's explaining, it's giving a definition. What is the current text that we uh, uh, delete? The ISP, the, the distribution from uh, layer to ISP, the loca location. And in order to make it consistent with the rest of the manual, with what I changed in the first, I showed in the first slide, we only add that the assignments will be in blocks equal or smaller than slash 48, but for end site, per end site. So if a user has two sites, they will ask for a slash 48 or a slash 47. Sergio also understands here that I'm changing the minimum. No, the minimum continues to be a slash 48, but per end site. And the most important thing in the next paragraph is exactly the same, nothing changes. The most important thing to understand here is that all this has to do with the fact that today, this 
is the way it's being done. If I take a client to La Clinique that has four offices, they're going to, he's going to be given uh, slash 48 unless he says he doesn't need them. But it's not explicitly expressed in the manual and you could interpret that uh, La Clinique uh, has no obligation to award those slash 48. It could be interpreted that way and that's why I think this clarification is important. There's several RIRs and this is something that I have seen uh, for a long time, and I think that the first to change it was Afri Nick with the text that was a, a bit uh, uh, different. Ripe uh, changed it uh, to exactly the same text, and um, AP Nick um, too. Uh, in Arin, there was already another text that basically meant the same. And with that, that would be the end of my presentation, and I used only half the time. Thank you, Jordi. We will now welcome Mariela Rocha from LACNIC staff to present the impact analysis. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jordi. Actually, our impact analysis of this proposal is not completed. It's in process. But what happened? when doing the impact analysis is that a few questions were raised or different considerations prior to beginning the impact analysis where we decided to sort of well some of the concerns or risks that we detected we thought that meanwhile we continue with the impact analysis we wanted to listen to the community and and the concerns they have raised about the 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 proposal some of the concerns or risks that we detected well we wanted to learn what the community thinks about them it could be part of the discussion for example we have three in the first place we believe that using the definition of end user as the baseline, baseline to define end site might not be as appropriate. End users might have a business relationship with their supplier or a service agreement. So it would be inappropriate to define an end site where we are expecting to have a different type of legal relationship. Second, we think this policy implicitly favors the creation of new uh, NIRs without the explicit discussion in the community with that in a different kind of legal entity. Finally, we don't fully understand what is the problem that the author is trying to resolve and we have not really received questions of this nature. So we are interested in, in really asking the community whether there are cases like this or if they are interested in actually seeing this type of definitions being resolved. And that would be all on our end. Very quickly, since I used half of my time available as a community or not necessarily as the author. I don't understand what you meant by the NIRs and we might need further discussion and the other items that Maria mentioned. I think um, not necessarily from my text that I, I submitted, but rather the current text. Mariela as LACNIC staff, not Mariela as herself. If we look at what she's saying at the items that she showed of the current text, I, I do have actually the same questions as, as hers. In 1.7 of our manual, instead of having four points, and it's actually one of Sergio's suggestions, we could summarize it in one. And I agree with that. The, the business relationship could be different, but that doesn't change my suggestion. I'm saying that an end site for an end user might have multiple locations. I hope this is not misconstrued as an end site, the one single option for location of that end user, although they have different offices in different locations. That's what I'm trying to explain in addition to solving the fact that there is no end user definition. Basically, that's it. I have no problem in waiting for the impact analysis and further feedback and maybe 
modify my proposal, including answers to your questions and, and concerns. I actually did not know they were there to the concerns or questions to the current text. Thank you, Mari, for that analysis. Thank you, Jordi, for your comments. And we will now open, open the floor for discussion. So you can submit your questions in the Q&A section, or you can raise your hand, or in the Montevideo hub, you can ask questions in person. So two questions per question, and two minutes per question, and two minutes per answer. We do have a person here requesting the microphone. Sergio, can you well introduce yourself, your name, organization? Sergio Rojas, I represent myself. I'm part of the internet community. Well, based on what you just said in your presentation that LACNIC might reject or not accept a justification of an end user who presents a particular or scenario in where they need to allocate slash 48, that is not correct. I cannot find anything like that in the in the policy manual. There are several end user organizations that have been allotted more than slash 48 with the adequate argument to do so, but there's nothing in the manual for LACNIC to think that we can only assign a slash 48 as the only prefix. That's not correct. And considering what we discussed in the policy list this morning, I think that I disagree. I'm against the policy as the text is uh, worded right now. Sergio, I did not say that the guideline states that we cannot assign. It said that it's not explicit. So if you're reading the text, you might not know whether that's the case or not. I actually, and I think I stated this in my emails, I've taken to LACNIC and um, user clients with multiple sites, and we've never been rejected slash 48, several slash 48 for one organization because they have different locations. But this is not explicit in the text. So if I am a new entrant and I read the guideline, I not necessarily understand that's the case. It doesn't make it easier for a good uh, IPv6 deployment. Thank you, Jordi. Sergio? I'm sorry. But we also have questions in the Q&A. You can go ahead with the Q&A. OK, Janina, can you go ahead with the Q&A? OK, so the first one is from Ricardo Patara and says, I am against. It's saying it's showing that we're trying to confirm the fact that end users have multiple sites, but the policy in place is not limited to that. So there is no problem with regards to the 4.5.24. It's not contradictory. The current text says that there is no recommendation criteria or restriction. It is important to to keep it because in addition to that text, there are other important items that each uh, LIR could develop their own rules. And in addition to this, any allocation any slash 48 allocation or larger has to be recorded. And Ricardo continues saying, in addition to that, some of things seem, seem inappropriate. 1.7 indicates the service provider assigning an uh, end user location. It is not assigned to a specific location, but rather an entity or an end user. The entity, so the end user, is who at the same time might assign or attribute an address to a certain location, service, or network service or structure. So what Ricardo is saying, I mean, if we do not consider the changes I made to 1.7, we would be incurring in the same interpretation mistake. And what Ricardo said about what well, the section that I deleted, I actually don't think he's right because the registry, and as I said before, in, in, in other part of the manual, in item 4.56, some text is duplicated. I'm not saying that we need to keep the section that I am deleting, I might rethink that. 
of course not but there is text that's duplicated in the part that says that anything over slash 48 thank you jordi okay sergio you can have the floor sergio no okay okay we have a, another person here in the room requesting the mic We, we cannot hear you. Oscar Robles from LACNIC. Yeah, that was my concern when Mariela mentioned some of the of the risks and, and Jordi's already explained it, but his clients have had something like this happen to them. Well, we think, but LACNIC thinks it's some governments had attempted or have tried to show that they were end users, but at the same time, they're trying to allocate addresses to different entities that do not have the same, that are not have the same legal entity characteristics. Although there are government authorities, they're not the same entity or the same body. So I think that goes beyond the scope of that definition. So it's a sort of uncovered NIR. So there are government authorities in a country. So that's somewhat of a sensitive issue. So what we think there's no real need for it. And so whoever has had this need found the way to solve it. So when we are speaking about prioritizing time, we feel that, I mean, this is not something that we're actively seeking to solve, the, the issue with the NIRs. We are sort of trying to make something clear that it's not necessary, but we will, in short, have the impact analysis available. Oscar, what you are saying is, I mean, perfectly understandable. 1.9 says that we cannot reassign. I understand what you are saying because it has happened to me several times, different government authorities, and I actually spoke about it in LACNIC Cuba. The Panama government had been allocated addresses for a university and they were in turn reallocating. So I know this has happened. And although you and I understand the guideline and we know the manual, we know what it says and that end user can have different locations, the government or the user who will need these resources, they might read the manual. And since the text is not clear, they can misconstrue it and they might not ask and they go ahead, they make their request and they are not doing it on purpose, but they are going to do an incorrect use of this manual and then they fall in a violation or a breach. So I think it is better to really clarify it, to make it clear, especially when we know that has happened. It's not just me. In other RIRs, they have raised this concern and there might be other solutions, but I understand what you're saying about the NIR and we made a change within this regard about two or three years ago when we spoke about the definition of assigning. But of course, I will wait for the impact analysis and I will let you know. Thank you, Sordi, Janina. Are there any more questions in the Q&A? Yeah, one from Ricardo Patara. He says the proposal shows that uh, the allocations are done through the localization of the entity or the end user with a minimum slash 48. This will create different gaps and these allocations are for the entity itself. If they have a special need due to different internal locations, they might justify a larger allocation without problem based on uh, the policies in force. There's no limitation to that. And it is not correct if you are interpreting otherwise. It's not about interpretation. It is about the text not being clear. 
the proposal is not saying that we are allocating for the different locations, but that locations are being taken into account for the allocations for these entities. But based on how many locations that entity has. Bien. Creo que no tenemos. Okay, so the chairs, chairs, you have the floor. Thank you for sharing your opinions. We will now gauge the room temperature. Let's see if we can see poll number three on screen. Thank you, we can see it on screen. Okay, so the people in Montevideo I will ask you to raise your hand, those who are in favor of that proposal. Can you please raise your hand if you are in favor of this proposal? Thank you. I will now ask you to raise your hand if you are against this proposal. Thank you. And those abstentions, please raise your hand. Okay, so let's look at the poll results. And our assistants are telling us that we have 27% uh, of the poll participants are in favor, 29 against, and abstentions 45%. Remember that it would be great that those who vote against can provide, maybe in the Q&A or in the list, some sort of explanation as to why you voted against. Okay, they are telling me also how many votes there are in the room. But the proposal 2021-5 version 1 for the update and user and end site definitions will come to the seven weeks on October 27th. So up until then, moder uh, chairs will let everybody know if that proposal has reached consensus or not. We encourage you to continue discussing this proposal in that list.